welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am joined by the lovely Nina Singh, Hello. Dr. <laughs> Nina Singh. That is not what we're gonna talk about today. We are not here to give medical advice, but we will talk about a little bit of her job because it is involved with what we're gonna focus on today. But first, I want you to just give a little bit of background about yourself. Okay, uh, hi, my name's Nina. Um, Lakin and I met through the planner community. Um, yeah. She had probably been in the community, I think like a year or two before I started. And when I moved to Chicago, I started residency, which is like when I was a year one Meredith Gray and after medical school. And I moved to Chicago and I just needed a way to balance my professional life and have some kind of a personal life. So I did that and then um, I just uh, have an Instagram just like for fun where I show the things that I do and how I plan my day and how I try to be efficient with my time. Right now I am in training to be a cancer doctor, which is just another step, it's called fellowship, so that I'm in right now, so. Um, that's that's awesome. Yeah. She's super busy and we'll get into that in a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, we met, you came to New York for a friend's birthday? Yeah, we came for her birthday because we were both on vacation. Her and I were both on vacation at that time. So yeah, you came for her birthday, yeah. you came over and she you had just gotten the very first Chrissy and Designs Oh binder. my gosh, it was amazing. The first one. And I was like, you have to bring it. And even though we're going to a bar, yeah. you have to bring it because I need to see it in person. And and then we went to a bar. I took you to Brandy's, which is yeah. where I take everybody. I've talked about Brandy's before. If you've been around, I it's my favorite piano bar in the whole city. I bring everybody that ever comes to visit. The best part was is that my um, colleague that was there with me did not know about the planner world, and she was abruptly. We were just smelling the Chrissy and literally the smelling them. And she Surprise. was like, what, what's your Instagram? And now she follows me and watches my stories and stuff and she kind of gets it, but it was a, I didn't tell her on the way. She's like, how do you know her? I was like, just through friends. Through the internet. I, I couldn't say that enough. No, point. I know. It was like 2016. Could you not admit that that was, it was before that. It was before, because yeah, it, it was before the first go wild. Oh, that's true. It was like 2015 or something. Yeah. And I feel like it was less acceptable then. It was. Or I just care less now about No, that. I think it was. It was a more, probably a little bit taboo to go meet somebody on the internet that yeah. you've never met before, but yeah. now, but now there's lots of conferences. So you yeah. can meet someone there first and then exactly. you can like become friends. And we came for the weekend, but then we also hung out with Lake in one of the nights. Yes. And so I just didn't know how to, and it was her birthday, so I didn't know how to incorporate this. <laughs> You're like, I want to hang out with this person that it's I've fun. actually never met in person. Yes. She didn't say that, but like, the, that's the true statement. Like, I've never met this person. And it's your birthday, but I want to meet her. She was sitting on the couch just watching us sign each other's planners. Oh, yeah. And we signed on the days of yes. our Erin Condren's, and she was just like, we were just like, sign my planner. You sign my planner. And she was like, what is happening? That was such a long time ago. Yeah, that really was. Well, and then lots of go wild later. And now, because I have family in Chicago, every time I come to Chicago, we try and hang out. Yeah. And We've introduced the guys to each other. Yeah. They chat. Like they grown they up chat together a little bit. A little bit. I feel like we, one of our big, I think, bonding things is the planner community has a lot of the mom level. Like the, I, I'm planning my life because I've got other people's schedules to manage. Right. And there's a lot of that. And I feel like we sort of bonded over the, no, I'm just planning my schedule. Like yeah, at the just, time, I'm just planning my, I don't have anybody else involved. I don't right. care about anybody else. I yeah. mean, Charlie's schedule is really demanding, but really, yeah, I think that was part of it. Yeah. I think being young professionals living in big cities, yeah. um, and we both, I mean, I think you met Sam a couple months before I met Buljeet, so yeah. we both started dating same. seriously around the same time. That's so true. When I interviewed for fellowship, which is what I'm in now, I stayed in Lakin's apartment, and I just remember, um, I think I was sitting on your couch, and that's actually when I met him. I was like laying on the couch, and I met and him. And I just learned this apartment. like a month ago, <laughs> also. That's crazy. Yeah, so I met Sam in May, and you yeah. met him in September. September. So we just kind of have gone through a lot of life phases at the same time. So like yeah. you, you were taking a bunch of tests, actuarial yes, tests. Yes, I was taking actuarial exams, you were studying. studying. I was yeah. studying. We just have a lot in common we that do. parallels. We have to go travel to visit our families and things like yes. that. So I think that a lot of the things we do on a day to day, we just see, we're just on the same page about a lot of stuff. I think that's very <laughs> true. We have a lot of the same. I think the yeah. one difference between us, dog person, cat person. Yeah. That's okay, we'll take it. It's okay. I don't dislike dogs. Right. I just don't want to take care of a dog. It's yeah. too much work. And I told Sam he can we can get a dog when we have a yard. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. I think it would be really hard where you guys live yeah, to have no. a dog and, and go outside. And it would be mean. Yeah. And I want if I'm if I want a dog, I want a big dog. I know me too. And I'm not gonna have a big dog in a tiny apartment. That's just mean. Yeah, I agree. I couldn't do it here where I live. It's I live downtown, um, like very downtown Streeterville in Chicago. So there are dogs here. It's a dog friendly city, but I just feel like it's unfair without a yard. I Unless agree. you go like running, dedicated every yes. day. Yes. Yes. You exercise yeah. them intently. Yeah. So that's a little bit of background. And as I mentioned before in the series, everybody that I'm meeting with, I'm sort of having them speak to 
a topic that they are very knowledgeable on and we've done a lot of different topics this far, thus far. Naya, Naya has a lot of knowledge. We can talk about meal planning, we can talk about being a doctor, we can talk about school, there's lots of things, but I think one of the things that impresses me most and I think that you do differently than I do is how you schedule your time and how you manage that work-life balance and how you make your day as productive as it can be. And just anything that you do throughout the day or the day before, because yes, we use our planners and maybe we plan throughout the week or we plan leading up to the week, but there's there's little things that you do that I've never heard anybody else do before or I've never heard anybody else share before. I will take that as a compliment. It is. It's a huge... <laughs> it's not that I'm a workaholic. No, no, but not even, but you're yeah. planning like the social things. Like yeah. even today, you posted like your day broken down by hour and yeah. it included a little bit of relaxation it included studying cleaning and us hanging out like you had it all yeah. planned out and so do you always do that the night before let's start there so um i don't always do an hourly type schedule the night before but i will say so when i was in college i was i guess involved in a lot of different activities and i was in a sorority i was in, in charge of our school's orientation um i was pre-med so i had a lot going on and i I mean, like the rest of us, when our planners came out, it was like the best time of the year. And I put all my tests in advance and then all of my meetings for all the things I was in. And then I realized um, that I was really bad at estimating my time. And so I started practicing kind of living by an hourly schedule so that I could make time to have fun with my sorority sisters or go to football games and still get stuff done. And then I didn't do it as much in medical school because the theme in medical school is just study. Just study. Yeah. But when I got to residency, that's when I realized that I did have some downtime and how I used it was important. So I actually started practicing this, I mean, 10 years ago. And so I do do it more on busier days. I will okay. plan an hourly type schedule and it's more just like block scheduling. I know a lot of yeah. people do blocks Yeah. and mine is more, okay, what are like the four things I have to get done tomorrow? And then what are my biggest time constraints? So if I have a clinic or I'm on inpatient medicine, I already know from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. my day's taken up. So I know that part. And then I'm, then, you know, I plan the hours before and after that. And then it just makes it more efficient, I guess. Yeah. So. The other thing I think that's really interesting about that is you do that I've seen you do it in three different places. I've seen you do it just literally on a notepad, again, paper and pen. I've seen you do it in the Erin Condren Daily that has recently come out. And then I've seen you just do it on your phone. Yeah. So when do you decide which method you're going to use? So it depends on how busy I am. Okay. So if I have time, and I'm at to the point now that in the daily, um, the Erin Condor and uh, Petite Planner, the daily, I, I love that thing. And what I did was is they have, you know, a bunch of lines on it. So I time it from 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. till the end of the day. Um, and every line is like an hour. It's perfect. So if I have enough time and I have my planner stuff out right now, it's neatly tucked away. I'm really proud of myself. But if I have enough time the day before, I will spend 10 minutes or 15 minutes and kind of make a day and then I'll embellish it and I'll put pictures in there and things like that. Um, if I don't have as much time, I will um, do it in my phone. And sometimes I don't always do it the night before. Sometimes it's in the morning or okay. sometimes we have meetings a couple times a week in the morning and there's a lot of downtime in these meetings. So I just take five minutes and kind of make a to-do list and then I just make an hourly schedule and then I keep up with it on my phone. So if I don't have enough time the night before, I'll do it on my phone. And then the hourly on weekends doesn't have that same structure. It's two days on a page. Yeah. So that's the only negative I would say of that planner. So I agree. Yeah, that's when I'll use my um, like a notepad okay. to do it so that I can actually write it out. But the time living factor, you know, I don't want that to stop me from planning, and that's when my phone comes in essentially. Okay, that's I think that's really helpful. I actually have been messing around with a Google Calendar, like oh really controversial, and I just Please. feel like nobody wants to hear get that. Out. <laughs> no, don't kick me out of the club. I'm using both. But what I like about it is I can do that hourly planning and then I can move it very easily yeah. so that if something changes, I can move it around. And then I, I don't put things in my weekly planner that doesn't make sense and I'm not going to achieve it. Because sometimes I would use that evening box as that's how much time I have after work. And that's not always that's true. That's not always true. Right. And I would put too much in there and then I wouldn't get it done and I would feel bad. But if I map it out by hour yeah. on my Google Cal, then I can, I put it in my planner, but then if something changes, I can just, you can move it. I will say that's 
that's why I use like boxes and stuff, so because you can move them out. Or the nice thing is about the daily planner is if you turn just the turn the page and you just don't have to look at it again. Um, but no, I agree. I think the the best thing about planning hourly is you have to be really realistic with your time because if you know a task takes two hours, and another one takes two hours, another one's gonna take you an hour. Well, that's five hours. Do you really have that after work? Yeah. You get home at six and eat yes. something. Unless you're gonna stay up until midnight, you don't have that time, and then you're like, hmm. I don't have that kind of time and then you actually prioritize what's important and I think the things that yes. are overly ambitious you can kind of move to another day and it helps you also just give yourself some grace because I think if you just make a to-do list and you don't get half of it done you feel are, terrible yes, you're very it's very like a self negative thing you talk negatively to yourself that you're you can't get things done yes. but then if you actually plan out how long things take you're like well this task took three hours of course I didn't get other things done so right. I think it's that's also nice practice is helping because I'm learning how long things take I right. think that's hard too is I used to put that I would edit two videos after work. Well, depending on the video, that is not possible. I was gonna say, that's pretty good. <laughs> if, if they're videos like this, to be honest, it's a lot easier. These take very little. Because we're chatting. Because we're chatting, yeah. and I'll edit a couple things here and there out, but for the most part, these videos are very easy to edit. If it is a video where I'm popping stuff up on the screen, like prices or whatever, or plan with me is to take forever I to edit. Imagine. So there's no way that I could do two videos after right. work if one of them is plan with me. And that's, I, every time I put that down, I'm like, what were you thinking? So I'm just trying to be more realistic about my time so yeah. that when yeah. I, at the end of the day, I feel like I actually accomplished what I said I was gonna, going to accomplish because it was realistic. Right. Yeah, it kind of helps you, if you're a really ambitious person, kind of put that, it kind of helps you check yourself. And the other thing I do, if any of you out there work a lot of hours, I actually time my hours for my work schedule, okay. or not time them, or I record how long I've worked. So that way, at the end of the week, if I'm like, only got like three things done outside of work, I'm, I can look and say, oh, I worked 86 hours, that's fine, it's reasonable. So that's I don't think I've one. ever worked 86 hours a week in my entire life. So our limit is technically on average, 80. we're supposed to work 80-ish hours a week over four weeks on average. Like that is, and we're not supposed to go over it, but that is like what the limit is. That's, that's why I, yeah. I feel like, yeah, that's I, feel like it. I remember that from Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. So that is, man, I know no, it's I so unrealistic. Accurate. <laughs> but that part, I remember yeah. that because like one of the interns wanted to like yeah. go to surgery and the person was like, no, you hit your limit, go yeah. home. You can't work anymore. That's so interesting. No, Which, even when I was in the busiest department I was yeah. ever in, it was never that many hours. I mean, this lifestyle for me is temporary, so I think the reason, and I think a lot of people will be like, oh, you're so ambitious and you hustle so hard all the time, but in my head, I know that this has a time limit. I would could not do this for the rest of my life. So the people that are working that many exactly. hours and they don't know when it's going to end, they don't have a plan right. for it to end, that is like... I, I think that harder. can be really hard, yeah. but when I know, I mean, I have a countdown of uh, 16 months, you know, so I know how many calls I have left, but it's, awesome. it's, it's a, it's a finite thing. So I know that if I want to get the most benefit now for, for my future, that I'm just going to work hard and I'll put in the time now. And then things, I mean, then I want to have children. So yes. there's other things coming happens. after that, but I mean, at least that way I know it's a temporary thing. So I think that's what you know, if you're going through school or you're studying or have something hard in your life like that, you have to kind of look at it like it's a temporary thing. Yeah. You get what you can out of it while you're doing it. So one of the things that I do with my free time is try to study, and that's more for my future so that when I'm done training, I've kind of Studied. used my training, you know, and taken everything out of it that I could have. Okay. So, um, but yeah, it's a temporary thing. It's okay. not going to be forever for me. Random doctor question, not like a medical question, I think a doctor lifestyle question. So I know you your call schedule is set by the hospital yeah. now. If slash when, if you ever had a private practice, how does that work with being on call? So it's actually pretty interesting. Um, it depends on what field you're in. So okay. if you're a cardiologist, if there's a heart attack at 2 a.m., you're gonna be there at 2.05 because as the, the faster you can intervene, the better that person does. Same with neurosurgery. If you, you know, someone has a bleed in their brain, you need to be there immediately. Um, with oncology, there are only a couple emergencies that we actually have to go into the hospital and us going in immediately doesn't always alter the course of things. Okay. So in that sense, our calls, I. I would say I'm in a field that the call schedule is a little bit um, more relaxed. On the flip side, when I'm in clinic, I'm having much deeper discussions with my patients and we're counseling about a lot of stuff like right. end of life a lot or going just on. a lot of harder yeah. talk. So my goal is to go into private practice, which is one of the two routes you can go into. And so it kind of depends on how many um, colleagues you have. So if you're in a practice with four, you know, one week out of the month, you're going to be on call. And okay. on the weekends in private um, practices, you, you know, maybe go in once on the weekend if you're covering that weekend. Okay. And it's for a couple of hours. So it's a different kind of balance than where I'm at now in training. We have these giant academic centers and we have just you know five times the patient volume, so it requires residents and fellows to be in the hospital more. Okay, it should be better. It'll still they'll still be called, but I'm pretty fortunate that I have a easier call than other fields. Okay, that was sort of my question. Like you yeah. will still have call, but it's 
how what how it would differ. Yeah, and you usually split up holidays and things like that. So the biggest okay, constraint yeah, is that, that you can't travel for that holiday, but you can still celebrate with your family. So my mom actually, my mom's a physician, so she would take um, Thanksgiving call, and then we would actually have family over, and she would actually go in for a couple of hours Thanksgiving morning and the day after, but it's much lighter in the community for that. And then she would probably get off Christmas exactly. and be able to do whatever she Do wanted. whatever, exactly. Okay. And then we would go to India then, oh. for winter holidays for us. Okay. So it kind yeah, of yeah, right, out. not Christmas, yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. And so there's something else we talked about how you look at your work schedule and then you pick the other important things you're going to do that day. How, this is two, two pieces, how do you pick what those important things are you're going to do that day? And then how do you fit them in around work? Okay, so picking the most important things to be time sensitive. So if I have to give out, so part of our fellowship training is giving a lot of presentations, yeah. looking up primary literature and synthesizing it. So it's to practice that process, but okay. then also to learn that stuff and present to people. So if I have a presentation and we usually have like maybe two a month or so, that's the highest priority outside of work okay. that I have to work on. Otherwise, um, you know, commitments I have with family or friends yeah. is also important. Um, working out to me is really important. Yeah. I'm, I'm to the point where meal planning, you know, only takes an hour or two of yeah, my it's week. Not, so. Yeah. so it's pretty pretty easy in that sense and then any like filler time I have in between those things I try to supplement with studying okay. so at the end of the day if I have free time I try to study now so I can be a better oncologist one day essentially yeah. well no and then in terms of where you fit that stuff around the work schedule or the commitments to friends and family so one of the best things I started doing in the last year, um, I found this YouTube video on BuzzFeed. I did, you know when you go down like that oh rabbit gosh, hole? The rabbit holes. So, the rabbit holes. Um, but this one was called the CEO routine and I did a couple of CEO yeah. weeks on my Instagram. So basically it just looked at the pa patterns of a lot of different CEOs yeah. and what they do on a day to day. So a lot of CEOs get up at the crack of dawn at like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. and then they're productive in the morning before work. They go to work, they come home and then they kind of unwind at 7 p.m. or so. Yeah. I um, wanted to practice doing this and I started getting up at like 4 a.m. 4 a.m. is a little too early for me. I can't do anything with the 4 in front of it unless yeah. I'm going to the airport. Right. Four and a half hour. I guess 4 p.m. I meant 4 a.m. I meant 4 a.m. I did this for a couple of weeks at a time and I realized if I worked out in the morning or did other things in the morning I had more energy and then if I was at work and it was a long day I felt like well I already got stuff done for myself right. in the morning. So I actually over the last year the best habit I've ingrained is getting up. I get up every day almost at 5 a.m. Yeah. or 5.30 and um, it just helps me be a lot more productive. So I usually schedule my workouts in the morning or if there's something that's time sensitive I didn't get done the night before, um, I do it in the morning. And that also means that if you want to sleep, which I, that's one thing I've worked on is trying to sleep more. Yeah, um, you have to go to bed at nine or 10 o'clock at yeah. night. But I've realized that once pa once it's past like eight or 8.30, not that productive I just anyway. don't care anymore about being productive. Yeah. And I don't think that life is to be lived just to be productive, but on the weekdays when I have a lot going on, no, that's, yeah. that's the important thing. So yeah. I've realized to kind of do a nighttime routine at 9 p.m. and then I get up in the morning and then the first thing I usually do is work out five days a week um, and then go from there. Okay, and then you mentioned one time on your Instagram, I feel like it was recent, where you will do the less time sensitive stuff earlier in the day and the more time sensitive stuff later in the day. Yeah. Can you talk to that? Yes. Yeah, so I know this is a weird concept. Yeah. I'm a, totally so weird. So I'm a procrastinator, right? So yeah. why would I do something today that I could do next week, right? Um, and so I feel like if I get the stuff done that's due tomorrow or the day after, like I'm in a good spot and then I'm good to go. But the thing is, is my work always piles on. So if I'm not staying on top of stuff, I'm going to get extra work and then I'm going to be drowning at some point. Right. So I developed this concept that if I, you know, got to leave work early at three or four, well, I have the rest of the night to get stuff done. Um, if I would just do the stuff that was due in the next day or two at night or that I had to get done in the next yeah. couple days, then after that I was done. But if I started doing stuff that, oh, I need to do this next week or order this gift or, you know, study this chapter or pre present this presentation in a week and a half, things that were less time sensitive, I did those first. And then when that was done, I still... Um, then I would do the things that had to be done immediately because those things you have to get done. Yeah. Right? So if it's eight o'clock and I'm done with the stuff that's due later, well, I still have to spend an you hour have to or do so. the thing that's due tomorrow. You have to do it. So you kind of trap yourself as a procrastinator. So interesting. Yeah. That is so interesting. I will say I don't do it on call because I don't know how call is going to go. Sure. If it's busy, then I'm, I'm not going to take that gamble. If it's anything that's risky, I'm not going to do it. But if I okay. have a giant chunk of time, that's what I'll do right. because I have to force myself as a procrastinator to get stuff done early and that's the way I do it. That makes sense and I mean unless you are also a doctor. Yeah. For most of us it's not that risky. Like yeah. it's not and so I think this goes back to learning how much time things take and yeah. so 
what I will do, unfortunately, is come home from work and I'll do the most Im the, the most immediate thing, which is yeah. usually editing the video. And then, like you said, when I'm done, even if on my time block it yeah. says, now go do this other thing that's related right. to your goals, I will not do them. And I will, like, take a bubble bath. And not that yeah. that's bad, but you know what I mean? I'll yeah. go do something else. But if I get used to how long it would take, I do the other thing first and then edit the video afterwards, yeah. then I can still go to bed at the time I'm supposed to go to bed. But I think learning yourself and how much time things take right. is a big piece of that because right. you know how long it's going to take you to do the thing that's due tomorrow well and knowing yourself right knowing the kind of task the the type of person you are and how you approach tasks yes. is really important okay. so I, I think most of us though once we do the thing that's due soon we're done we're done the thing that's yeah. due next week who cares about hey, I can do that next week right exactly but the thing is is that next week's gonna get busy too and so it's you're it's always, always gonna, gonna have new that's, stuff piling up that's so true yeah that's one of the things I love about the power sheets too, is I think it makes me realistic about what I can get done in a given amount of time. And I know when next month, that next month is coming. And yeah. so if I think of something that I wanna do, I have stopped myself and said, don't add it to January or February, put it on a sticky note and say, I can get to that in March. Yeah. Because it's not something that's like super important right this second, yeah. but I, I can do it. I yeah. can do it later. So Lakin got the power sheets, so I got the power sheets. <laughs> so she started the trend, people. Once she posted the video, I remember where I was. I was in Florida on vacation with my parents, and I watched the video while we were like we were waiting for our dinner and I was browsing. And I texted her and I was like, I'm gonna do I need those power sheets. Do I need those? Yeah. It was October and I was like, I'm ready for 2019 yeah. now. I was too. And one of the biggest and I mentioned this in a video before, one of my biggest regrets was actually not starting sooner because I, it took so much, the prep work took so much longer than I thought it was going I, to, and I wish I had started earlier than I did. And so even though it's like, you really want to start thinking about 2019 in October? No, but they released them in October for a reason. Right. So this year, as soon as I get them, I probably will start thinking about starting them. Yeah. And even though I still need to focus on 2019, I'm already like in 2020. I'm already in 2020. And You're in 2022. It's fine. I'm in 2022. <laughs> I'm in, I'm in a lot of years that aren't, aren't right this now. Year. Yeah. Any other time management tips, tricks, or just like things you've learned in your experience? I guess to be kind to yourself. Okay. I mean, you're going to have a bad day. I mean, there have been days where I come home and I don't want to do anything. And because I do stuff ahead of time with that system, I can take a day like that and do nothing. And again, this is a temporary thing for me. So when it's a rough day or you have a lot go on, like you can take that pause and yeah. you're not a failure. And yeah. I think the one thing that if you're type A like I am, which a lot of people call type awesome. <laughs> type awesome, I love it. You know, you just have to learn to be kind to yourself and I think give yourself the same grace you give your loved ones about getting stuff done because I think the point of life isn't to be as productive as possible, it's to enjoy life. You know, I think put good into the world, make the world a better place than, you know, you found it, but to just be kind. And I think that's one of the reasons I love planning hourly is that you really can give yourself that grace and it's okay to take three hours for yourself in a day. You know, that's like a small part of your day. Right. So. It's kind of like that quote that one hour yeah. workout is like whatever, 8%. The 4%. Four percent. Yeah, but I feel like you gotta cut sleeping out of that. I feel yeah. Like well, better. and you have to go to the gym, and then you have to shower afterwards. So it's, it's actually it ends up being two hours. So it is eight percent of your day. Oh, all right. And then as a part of the series, I am asking everybody the same two questions. Okay. So the first one is, what is one goal that you have for twenty nineteen? It can be small, big, personal, professional. Just one goal that you're excited about. I hope this doesn't come off weird. My one goal this year is to be selfish. So let me explain okay. that to you. Yeah. So this is I'm getting married in November. Yep. You're coming. Oh, in Tokyo. Okay, okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. We have flights booked to India. I know. I'm so excited. So this is the last year that I'm kind of by myself, and it's kind of that much more so because Buljeet and I are now long distance. Yeah. So he's in Los Angeles, and I'm here in Chicago. So this is kind of my last year of just like me by myself with yeah. my schedule and my time. So. I picked this year to be selfish and just really focus on myself. Um, so every month I made like a mini goal, which is it. silly. And so every month the biggest focus and my power sheets is around that one goal for the month. And it kind of goes through timelines. So in these next two months I'm studying for my boards. In April um, I'm trying to declutter because my roommate is moving out. Um, May it's, we're going to go wild and I'm going to have fun that month. So it's not that I'm not going to have fun at other months. And but it's your birthday. Yeah, and exactly. May. That's the other selfish part yeah. of me. Yeah. And November we're getting married. So celebration is the theme for that month. So I kind of just have a theme every month because I feel like this is the last time in my life I probably will get to be this selfish. Yeah. And just focus on myself. So that's kind of what I want to get out of I love that though. Thank you. The other question, this is a planner channel, is what is your number one planner supply? That's a good one, but 
hands down stickers. Sticker. Like, I mean, Any stickers. stickers. All the stickers. I mean, big stickers, small stickers. I don't discriminate when it comes to stickers. All the stickers. Icons, metallic stickers, matte. I mean, I don't care. Metallic stickers. I love metallic stickers in person, but yes. they just don't photograph well. Wow. You, it's really funny because if people watch me, usually it's full G, he'll watch me angling my camera. I'm like hovering yes. over. Yes, getting metallic and stickers have, in the right angle. I have a light like on my side that I'm holding up and I'm trying to like get so the, awkward. the shine. It's so yeah. awkward. But I don't know, I think the stickers just make planning so much fun. And so I think you definitely can plan without stickers, and I do sometimes, but it just adds that extra oomph that you get to oh, kind yeah. of set, scrapbook your life. So when I explain it to people, I usually say, it's like a scrapbook of my life, but it's like a functional planner. Yeah. With a scrapbook kind of installed. In, in. Yeah, component. Yeah. yeah, Jen Ross, we did a video over on her channel, and she asked me the question, like, putting all these stickers out and having it visually, does that help things sink in for you, or what? what is the purpose of using all the stickers? And she did, she asked it in a very like nice way. It wasn't like a judgmental why we, way. Yeah. Why do you have a bunch of stickers? Because she's switched to bullet journaling. But I told her it was more about, if it's pretty, I will look at it more. Yeah. And I'm more apt to use something that looks nice and looks pretty. And that's what the stickers do, it, like make it for me. Is yeah. that it looks, it looks, I want to go look at it. Yeah, and I think also, um, it's nice to be able to create something that's beautiful that you think is beautiful. Yes, oh, that's true. Because I think so much of our day, at least I think your job also, yes. it's very like left brain, yeah. analytical, and then my day is very structured. But when I get to plan, I get to you know play yes. with colors and things like that. And then it also is productive because it's my schedule. So of course it takes a little bit longer, right. but but you actually, it's a combination yeah. of you're being creative, but you're also feeling like you're being productive. Yeah. Again, life is not all about productivity. Right. But if I sat down to like it's like watercolor or like color in a coloring book, yeah. it's probably not necessarily. I'm not gonna feel as productive at the it's end. It's like two birds with one stone. Yeah, it's really funny because Buljeet when he watches me plan, he thinks that he. Actually actually loves it because I'm just like smiling from ear to ear oh. and I like have stickers everywhere oh, and he's always like oh, oh I'm so glad that you're planning you're so happy right now I love so, it oh, that's yeah. awesome okay and the people can find you where so the place I'm most active is my Instagram it's nine and planning and I will link it below and planning um but that's usually the place that I have okay. the most and I and she's very like her Instagram is for her and to make her happy and I think that's one of the things I love about it oh, is okay. that you're not you're not trying to Instagram to Instagram. Right. Like, that sounds so, you know what no, I mean by that? Like, I don't play the game really. Yes, yeah. yes. You're not, you're not posting things to like have it be the perfect picture that somebody's gonna like, some big company's gonna repost. Right. Like, it is to share your love of planning right. and to hopefully inspire somebody else. Yeah, so for me, Instagram is a hobby, and I've noticed because it's very easy to get sucked into the game and the algorithm yes. and stuff, but I realize it's much more, it's much less fun that way. It is. And I have to stop myself, not stop myself, but if I realize I'm doing things for a reason and it's for Instagram and not for me, and it's just less fun that way. And then it's not me, it's not authentic, and then I just don't enjoy it, and I'm, you know, I'm doing it because I want to have fun. I have a day job. Yeah. And my Instagram for me is like just to have fun and just yes. be myself and I'm, enjoy. And that's one of the things that's why you should go follow her. And her. it will, oh, and you will enjoy having that, that it's, it's a breath of fresh air in your feed when everything else on Instagram is very much, I feel like about the game yeah. and it's, it's sometimes it gets to be a bit too much. So, all right, that is it. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for coming over. Uh, yay. <laughs> if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please click that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you so much for watching. Happy planning. All the adjustments. Everything yeah. looks good. Like we look. Here. At the look for the white circle. White circle. That's yeah. What I thought. Okay. We could have. We could oh. talk about meal planning. Yes, you feel yeah. and and it's a and the practice is making that prop yeah. that it work. That did not make any sense. Um, I don't. So I started. I. Whoa, pull up. Okay. So and I know that next month is here. So when I think of not here, Balji is Balji texting Thanks. right now while we're trying to film. I know. Probably. It's fine. It's fine. That's awesome. I should. I should maybe do that. Maybe that's twenty twenty. I'm already in. Stop. She's already at 2020. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. All right. All right. Well, I am going to figure out how to close this out. That's not awkward.